It's NBA Draft Eve. What are some final thoughts heading into the big night? You are Locked On Spurs, your daily San Antonio Spurs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, this is Chris Sabat, and you're listening to Locked On Spurs with Jeff Garcia. Welcome back to Locked On Spurs right here on the Locked On NBA Network. I am your host, Jeff Garcia. News with Ken's 5 San Antonio. Yes, I am still under the weather. If you cannot hear this, so forgive me as we go on through this uh, episode of Locked On Spurs. Can't shake this stupid cold. But hey, we thank you for making Locked On Spurs your first listen each and every day. Free and available wherever you get podcasts. And on YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. What are we talking about today? Well, it's NBA Draft Eve. Tomorrow night, things get interesting for the Spurs. The fortunes change. The uh, the, the the all but obvious pick it gets official when Bayama puts on that Spurs draft day cap, and the franchise's history turns for the better. We're gonna be discussing that. Awesome sneaker news revolving around when Bayama and much much more. But speaking of tomorrow, you know it's a big day for Spurs fans. You know, I, I I lived through seeing Tim Duncan get greeted in San Antonio after the draft and back in the 90s. I saw what it was like when the city reacted when the Spurs got David Robinson and won that lottery. But I've never seen it to this fever pitch before ever. And I've been following the Spurs since they made their way from the Chaparrales to San Antonio, from Dallas to San Antonio, part of the ABA. This is big. This is huge. You know, there's a, I'm a big nerd. And for those of y'all, we're old enough to remember there's this uh, Transformers movie in 1986. This is old war veteran robot. And he's going through the battle in the movie. He's going through the battle. And one of his fellow teammates on the Autobot side says, hey, doesn't this remind you of anything? Because this guy, you know, always had some stories to tell about his, you know, his travels. And the old robot says, nope, I've never seen anything like this before. That's how I feel right now. I've never seen anything like this before. This is different. It's going to be interesting to see what's going to happen to the Spurs once it's official tomorrow and moving forward. It's going to be, it's not just that they're going to change from having an all world player because the Spurs have been there, done that. Tim Duncan, David Robinson. This is all international, global, universal player that is coming on board. It's going to be interesting to see how the Spurs franchise deals with that on and off the court. Who is going to help me today? He is back, everybody, just in time for the NBA draft tomorrow night. And, of course, sneaker news. He is Jack Thompson with San Antonio Sports Star Coast of the Saturday Morning Hangover. Jack, welcome back to Lockdown Spurs. I, I mean, it's can we just give Wimby the cap right now? Do we have to wait till uh, tomorrow night? <laughs> I think he should have already had it, yeah. He's hmm. not sure we've seen a number one pick where it was so unanimous in quite a long time. I mean, he he all but... Everybody's all but saying it. He almost slipped up in his final game out in France. He almost hit San Antonio. He's reacting to Spurs fans on Instagram. He's reacting to Spurs fans drawing him his new Spurs jersey on a piece of paper. I mean, everybody knows it's the worst kept secret in the NBA heading into the draft. But here we are, Jack. Uh, Tomorrow night, it's the big night. Uh, It should be a quick first pick for the Spurs. We'll see what happens afterwards. But... I mean, I'll be I'll be shocked if the Spurs have to use all what five minutes to turn in their pick. I mean, so yeah. Adam Silver should just come out on the stage, welcome everybody to Barclays, and go. By the way, the Spurs pick Wimbiama. So the second, the you know number two is on the clock now. But um, yeah, what are some final thoughts as we head into tomorrow's big night? Man, it's it's like you said, it's pretty surreal that you know we've been hearing about Wimby and his incredible talent, who he could be for, you know, quite a while now. And just the fact that it's coming to fruition, that he's actually going to be a spur. I don't even know how to feel. It's, it's, it's going to be an incredible night for sure. One that I will not soon forget if ever. And, and that's what I want to stress to the Spurs fans right now. You know, I lived in the era where there is no social media when Tim Duncan came. Obviously not when Dave Rahman was here or even George Gervin. It's here. It's time to preserve those memories, videotapes, 
you know, uh, if you're going to go to the uh, AT&T Center for the draft party, videotape or a cell phone tape, whatever you got to do, document everything, because this is going to be historic for the franchise. Jack, when we say historic, it, it's beyond that, because the Spurs franchise, franchise, never had themselves a Magic Johnson, a Larry Bird, a Michael Jordan, a LeBron James, a name with that type of star power. They're going to get it in less than uh, less than 48 hours, practically. How do you think the city and the organization will handle handling a megastar like that? It's going to be, it's going to be wild. I mean, the influx of just, you know, people and, you know, um, sponsorships and everything under the sun that's going to come San Antonio's way is going to be crazy. So it, yeah, I mean, I don't know how San Antonio is going to respond to it. We're going to, you know, it's going to change us as a city and just as a marketplace in the NBA and all, all of that stuff. It's going to be a wild ride. And I hope yeah. the Spurs are ready because it's, it's coming our way fast. We saw what happened in New York when he first touched soil. He was yeah. completely mobbed. So it's going to be, it's going to be a wild ride for San Antonio and the Spurs. No doubt about yeah. that. Yeah. It looks like the Beatles landed in, in the United States. That's what it felt looked like, you know, when uh, Wimby got off that plane and into the terminal out in JFK in New York City. It sort of looked like like thought like the Beatles were getting mobbed or it was Elvis is in the building kind of kind of vibe. Yeah. Even NBA even former NBA players were just floored. I mean JJ Redick, you know, was just amazed and you know when he met him uh, yesterday and it had him on his podcast. So we're we're, we're seeing this happen right now. Um look you, you look at the draft tomorrow and you know we, we know how historic it's gonna be. That's not to say that Tim Duncan's draft or Dave Robinson's draft or, you know, any other star all-star in between Sean Elliott was an all-star was, was not good, but we'll see if, if Wimby turns out to be what everybody's projecting him to be this all world talent. But some, one of the final thoughts or questions I have for you, Jack, uh, before tomorrow is this, what if he doesn't live up to the hype in year one? Would you be disappointed? No, I I won't be disappointed. I mean, I think San Antonio's got to realize this is, you know, he's still a 19-year-old kid. He's got a lot of maturing to do physically and mentally. So I think you know, the uh, long term is the way to go about all of this. That It's not going to happen right away. He's not going to instantly be the best player in the NBA, which, you know, that could be his ceiling. But it's – like I said, you gotta you gotta think of it long term. That this is still a young kid, never even lived in the state. Like he's only been here a few times for basketball. There's a lot riding on this kid, pressure wise too. So it might not all come at once, and we just gotta kind of temper expectations and just you know ride the wave of what Wimby's gonna bring. And his ceiling is as high as he wants it to be with his physical sure. tools and all of that. So it's a lot riding on this kid, and so we've got to kind of ease the pressure and ease, uh, you know, what we think he's going to be right off the bat so he doesn't crumble under that pressure and can grow to what we all envision him to be. I mean, look, he, he's coming to San Antonio with a lot of hardware from, Fran from the French League, MVP, blocks champion, scoring champion, rebound champion. So at least at that level, he's proven that he can handle it. Uh, we'll see what I can do at the NBA level. Do you think it's going to be that much of a jump from a French league to an NBA league as far as his development in year one? Uh, it's going to be different. Like we've said on previous podcasts, the NBA game is just so much different than the, uh, you know, international game. And I think it's going to be, you know, an easy transition in some areas and a hard transition in others. And like offensively, I think, you know, he's going to, flourish pretty well with the amount of space that he's going to get but you know defensively he's going to be guarding guys that you know are faster bigger stronger than he's ever had to guard before so it's going to be a lot of give and take with Wimby and that's when I say we've got to you know temper expectations that he's just going to come in and year one just completely turn us around it's going to be you know baby steps in the beginning getting him acclimated you know the his life is now basketball year round more than it ever has been in before. So it's a lot riding on this kid and 
I think, you know, I, I think it's all going to work out great for him. He's got the right mentality, the right temperament, good head on his shoulders. You know, he was born to do this, raised to do this by his parents. So I think it's all going to work out, but we've got to, you know, ease him into it along the way. We have to do our part also. Yeah, yeah, and, and it starts uh, tomorrow. Uh, you know, the at t Center will be yeah. open. Fan, fans will be there, jam-packed, uh, cheer it on. You know, I, I would caution everybody, don't leave after the first pick is turned in. You, you know, you never <laughs> yeah, know what the Spurs might don't. do. Yeah, it might do to get back into that uh, top 10, and that's what we're going to do when we get back. We're going to continue our chat about tomorrow's draft with Mayama. Does Jack think that the Spurs will try to buy back into that first round? I'll give you my thoughts. He'll give you his thoughts right here on Locked On Spurs. By the way, make sure to follow him on Twitter at Jack underscore Thompson 33. Hey, everybody, I want you to uh, check out BetterHelp. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Look, getting help throughout life can be difficult. You know, uh, you know, you have your ups, you have your downs, you look, and, and, and you know, you've gone through it, I've gone through it, everybody's gone through it. So it's easy to get caught up in also what everybody else needs from you. And you never take a moment about what you think you need from yourself. But we spend a lot of our time giving. It can leave us feeling stretched thin and burned out. Therapy can give you tools to find more balance in your life so you can keep supporting others without leaving yourself behind. So if you're thinking about therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, suited to your schedule. You just fill out a brief questionnaire. You get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Find more balance with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash LockedOnNBA today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash LockedOnNBA. Autobots, roll out. And we are back with Jack Thompson of the Saturday Morning Hangover, also with San Antonio Sports Star. Follow him on Twitter at Jack underscore Thompson 33. By the way, don't miss the LockedOnNBA draft live on Thursday night. Pick-by-pick pick analysis from our stable of local NBA hosts, national reaction from our NBA big board hosts, and a live check-in from inside the NBA draft. Locked on NBA draft live starting at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard on the Locked on NBA YouTube page. And we're talking again with Jack Thompson, San Antonio sports star. Jack, <clears throat> so we're talking about Wimbayama, you know, the, the draft tomorrow night, some final thoughts before the big night. Um, I, do, do you think that... Once he becomes a spur that, well, first of all, I want to say this. How, how quicker is everybody going to be like, not really like the national media, Jack, like not focusing on that he's in San Antonio. Cause remember that was the whole thing with the Spurs. They're boring. They live in a boring city. They have a boring <clears throat> star, Tim Dunk. They have a next boring star for a while, Kawhi Leonard. Now here is Wimbayama. It feels like that whole narrative about the San Antonio, the city of San Antonio just being born is gone. It's like he's just playing in San Antonio and there's no Sohan, there's no Keldon Johnson, there's no Zach Collins around him. It's just like Wimby versus the NBA. That's what it feels like was happening in San Antonio. Yeah, I mean, I don't disagree, but I think the, uh, you know, the NBA world is going to soon to come to find out how good, you know, Keldon, Devin, and Jeremy can be. I think it, it's, it, we're going to open up some eyes for sure. But, yeah, like you said, it he's changed just, you know, overnight, and he hasn't played a single minute yet. We're going to be the talk of ESPN for years to come. It's going to be constant coverage on Wimby, what he's doing, how he's playing. We're going to be under, you know, the biggest spotlight in the NBA, the biggest microscope in the NBA for quite a while, really, until, you know, Wimby becomes – you know, something great. And then the spotlight changes from, you know, just like microscoping everything he does to more of like admiration of yeah. who he's become and what he's doing. Like we see with like Giannis, somewhat of Jason Tatum. Joker's a perfect example. Like they've, you know, catapulted themselves into superstardom through, you know, the long run, drafted, developed, you know, took their lumps and became NBA great. And I expect nothing less from Wimby. So it's yeah. going to be a whole new world here in San Antonio, for sure. So speaking of expectations, there's an expectation the Spurs might be able to or want to buy back into the first round after they turn in their first pick, which will be win by Yama. I think they're going to try. I really think they're going to try to sneak into maybe that lower 
top five. What do you think? Yeah, I, I would hope. I mean, I certainly think we're going to tra- tra- try to trade back in. I don't know if it's going to be that high because if it's that high, it's going to cost us, you know, a, a Devin or a Keldon. So, yeah, yeah. How expensive is it going to be to buy back in? Is, is our team going to really try to stick it to the Spurs like with the high uh, uh, price sticker? Yeah, I think if we're trying to get back into that top five, they're definitely going to hit us with a hefty price tag. And, you know, why wouldn't they? I would do the same thing. So I think more realistically is us trying to trade back into maybe the later lottery with teams that, you know, maybe have vets and want more first-round picks later. So I think that would probably be the most likely scenario. And, again, something that I would love to see from the Spurs. So. Hopefully we can we can get our way back up in there. I would love to see it. What what names do you think the Spurs could target if they want to buy back in? Well, we've seen a lot of buzz around, you know, the Thompson twins, but like we said previously on the show that they kind of worry us because we don't really know how legit that overtime elite league is. Um I you know, we've seen Kobe Bufkin, the guard from Michigan, Anthony Black, um Kaysen Wallace, so we're definitely looking at guards when when uh, you break down all the names and trying to find that lead guard to go up and grow with Wimby. Is, you know, we kind of did the same thing with uh, Timmy and TP3. He came a few years later, but we still went and found him as guy as soon as we could. So I think that that's kind of, you know, the mold we're going after. And I would love to see us to go get, you know, someone that we see as our point guard of the future. Yeah, there's also uh, thoughts that the Spurs could try to uh, get back into the draft and so, well, for the first round pick that is, and select uh, Wimby's uh, French uh, teammate. I, I don't, I can't. Yeah. I'm not going to try to pronounce his last name. At Bilal. All. Yeah, Bilal. Or, <clears throat> but the, 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 he's being described as Baby Giannis. Yeah. Now, the last time I heard a baby something was Baby Jordan with Harold Miner. That was a bust. So. Um, that's a hefty praise right there for this guy out of France, but I don't think it is just to appease Wimby. I think the kid is really, really good. Your thoughts? Yeah, Bilal is an excellent player. The only thing that worries me about him is, you know, he's a 3-4, and right now, I mean, that would be three guys that, you know, you want starting between four guys, really, between Keldon, Jeremy, Wimby, and if we draft Bilal, that's four guys that you got kind of playing the same position. So that might mean the writing on the wall for someone else later down the, down the road. But the uh, defensive versatility and length that would come with drafting a Bilal Kulumbali would be crazy. I mean, he's, I think he stands six, eight with a seven foot plus wingspan. Yeah. Can do a whole lot on the court guard, every position. So definitely a great, prospect i'm just not sure how he fits on the roster as of today but you know everything's changing and the roster comes with that so there's going to be changes down the road and i think if if we draft him the writing is probably imminently on the wall for someone else i agree with you right there yeah i I think uh someone we would either trey jones he leaves blake wesley gets flipped or something like that or malachi who knows you know, you yeah, look at that. Especially, yeah, if you're going to get up that yeah. high in the draft, you're going to have to give someone up along with picks. Yeah. Uh, the Spurs also have two second round draft picks. Do you expect them to hang on to those, or do you think they'll try to flip those as well? I think those will definitely be, if we're moving up, part of part of the package. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there. Yeah, I think um, they'll use that as part, as you mentioned, part of the package. So, you know, I, I expect the fireworks after the first ra- after the first pick because we all know it is and very anticlimactic. <clears throat> but the fireworks will begin if the Spurs try to buy back because that could mean losing a, a player on the roster or a hefty uh, a sticker price that they have to pay, whether it be in drafts or draft capital or or the two round, second round picks as as you mentioned. We're talking with Jack Thompson right here on Locked On Spurs. He is with San Antonio Sports Star. And it is NBA Draft Eve, and we're getting you ready for tomorrow's big night. And when we get back, we're diving into a little sneaker news. Jack, for those who do not listen to, you should, though, uh, Saturday morning hangover. They love talking about sneakers. Some sneaker news has dropped regarding Victor Wimbanyama. We'll talk about that, get his reaction and my reaction and more right here on Locked on Spurs. 
Hey, everybody, I want to talk to you also about FanDuel. You got to check out FanDuel right now. With baseball season in full swing, there's no better place to get on the action other than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get a no sweat first bet up to 1000 bucks. That's up to $1,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. You just got to go to fanduel.com slash locked on to join today. Don't miss out your chance to snag a no sweat first bet up to 1000 bucks when you join FanDuel today. FanDuel is a major official partner of the Major League Baseball. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission. And I also want to talk to you about Mudslingers drive through Coffee Out in San Antonio. Look, it's serving the community. If you need a pick-me-up, you need a latte, you need a coffee, you need a cold drink, they have it all over at Mudslingers uh, right now. It's located at 2404 Thousand Oaks Drive, open Monday through well, pretty much every day from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. They have over 300 five-star reviews. They've been, you know, like I said, serving the community for so long now. They're the go-to spot for your quick pick-me-up. Or if you need to get nostalgia vibes, they have the OGOJ, which is basically the Orange Julius back in the 70s and 80s. It's back only at Muslinger's drive Through Coffee. And they got the Alien. You want to go get the Alien drink? It's for Wimby. Look, you pick one up. Get one ready for uh, t- uh, tomorrow night. Or go there tomorrow. Who, who, who cares? Just go get yourself the Alien drink. It's a mix of Red Bull, Kiwi, Red Apple mixed together. It's a great tasting drink. And again, it's called the Alien, just for Victor Wimbayama as he's got to you know, put on that Spurs jersey very, very soon. You can find them on TikTok, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram at Muslinger STX. Life is too short for bland coffee. And we're back right here on Locked On Spurs with Jack Thompson. He's with San Antonio Sports Star. Make sure to follow him on Twitter at Jack underscore Thompson. And uh, let's get into some sneaker news now. This is Jack's favorite topic. He loves sneakers, don't you? Oh, yeah. Big sneaker guy. Been a been a collector and a wearer for many, many years now. What's your latest pickups? Uh, the last shoes I got were some Air Max 1s, I believe. Yeah, wow. Air Max 1s. Um, I, I, were they, like, really expensive? No, not super expensive, but a pretty, like, um, not rare, like, colorway, but one yeah. you definitely, I, I've i never seen anyone else have them on, and that's kind of what I go for with shoes. Yeah. Well, speaking of sneaker news in Wimbayama, it is official. Like, official, official again. So he was with Team Nike uh, during his time in France, and there was some, some wondering if that will carry over into the NBA. Well, as officially it is. So he's still going to continue with Nike uh, in his NBA uh, career. Uh, how big is it for him to latch on to Team Nike? Is 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 that the company he needs to go as a rookie? Or do you think they'll protect him? What what have you seen from Nike when dealing with megastars like Wimbayama? I mean, yeah, that's definitely, you know, the, the leader in basketball shoes across the world, but they do a very good job of, you know, taking care of their talent and project protecting them. So yeah, I'd certainly see him being with Nike, probably uh, eventually getting that lifelong contract that we've seen the likes of, you know, Kobe, LeBron, Kevin Durant, players like that get. So yeah, I would certainly see him signing with Nike and being there for a very long time. Uh, tell me more about this lifelong contract. I didn't know they do that. Yeah. There are certain, certain athletes that have, garnered a lifelong contract with Nike because they've been around so long and, you know, of course, made them so much money. <laughs> it, gee, I, I didn't know that even existed, a lifelong contract. Uh, yep. Do you think Wimby will eventually get his own PE, his own personal edition? Oh, yeah. It, I guarantee you Nike's already working on it. We're talking about someone who's going to become potentially the biggest global star in all of sports. I mean, the NBA is an absolutely worldwide game, and he is the biggest name in basketball outside of the NBA. So once those two merge, Nike would be dumb, to say the least, to not get some sort of Wimbanyama shoe out as quickly as possible. Yeah, you're already starting to see a little bit of promotion of uh, Wimby already. If you go to the Nike Instagram page, they have something about like, oh, think bigger. We'll think even bigger than that. Or something like that. And a picture of Wimby looking up at the stars. So, yeah, it, it, it's coming sneaker wise. And you know, I'm pretty sure 
you know, Jack, you'll probably get some. I, I don't I don't think the Spurs have had a at least in your face type of sneaker athlete since David Robinson. Can you think of somebody maybe Tim Duncan? I mean, Timmy had his own shoes, but I would definitely not describe him as being in your face with them. I mean, they were, you know, everyone likes to call them dad shoes. They were, you know, boring, but, you know, functional, and they served Timmy well for a long time. I would even say, you know, um, Wimby's going to be far more front page, you know, yeah. sports, athletic wear than David ever was, for sure. I, there will be no one that, that compares to him. Right. David was up there though. Robinson, you know, he had his own apparel. He had his own sneaker line. What was it? The Air Force. He had um, uh, even his own his own commercial franchise with Mr. Robinson's neighborhood. Do you think he when because surpass that? Yeah, like I like we've reiterated hundreds of times, he's going to be the biggest name in sports across the globe. Yeah. I think anyone who's doing any sort of you know commercial marketing he's the way to go because everyone's going to want to see him. He's the biggest name to ever do anything. So yeah, I, I think he's going to surpass David. He's going to be on yeah. the LeBron level of, you know, marketing. Yeah. Kawhi was there for a second before everything went to, went to hell with San Antonio with the whole <laughs> uh, new balance rebrand and that. So, you know, there was that, but you not even though, no, 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 as of right now, Robinson still leads the pack, but you know Wimby's gonna surpass him in sneaker dominance as a member of the Spurs very, very soon. But I'm expecting those. You think those sneakers were gonna be uh, cost a pretty penny? You th- hey, do you think he might even revitalize or inject more fuel into the sneaker market? Uh, it really that then it comes down to. I mean, there are the super fans that are going to buy them no matter what. But they've also, like, you got to build a, a good-looking shoe. And even after that, like, the twos have to be good-looking. Like, you got to keep going and keep revamping and making them look better and better. And there are a few, like, shoes that have done that. And I can really only think of, like, LeBron. But his aren't even – his have fallen off as of lately. Kobe's really the only one that year after year the shoe was as good as the last one. So that's the the big thing with it too. But yeah, I can definitely see him, you know, revitalizing the sneaker market. I think, you know, it's going to be, they're going to be extremely sought after. They're probably going to come in some crazy cool colorways because his branding is the alien. So yeah, yeah, it's, they're, they're going to be a, a hot commodity. No doubt about that. Yeah, yeah, I, I think uh, Nike's already teased that it'll be centered around aliens, UFO, all that stuff, uh, because that's mm-hmm. his moniker there, the alien. So there'll be a lot of alien sightings in San Antonio and the NBA next season on the feet. Oh, with, yeah. Uh, yeah, with those sneakers once they drop. Hey, he is Jack Thompson with San Antonio Sports Star. Make sure to follow him on Twitter at Jack underscore Thompson 33. Talk to us about the star. There's been some changes. I. Uh, our boy Pledger has his own show now. What's cooking over there? Yeah, like you said, there's been some changes around the show. We unfortunately lost one. Going to miss Mike and his absurd takes for sure. But, yeah, my, my main man Pledge, he's got extra innings every weekday from uh, 6 to 7 where he gets to, you know, kind of make fun of and correct all the old heads on the program that, you know, get stuck in their old views. So I'm I'm very happy for Pledge. That talking about your dad. Hey, be hold. careful. You're talking about your dad now. You're you're talking about your. Hey, I'm talking, talking about, about your dad. I'm talking about there, all Jack. of them. Be careful. Equally. <laughs> to all of them equally. All of them equally. So yeah, but super excited for Pledge. Definitely deserves it. We're still going to be holding it down on Saturdays with the Saturday morning hangover, and we definitely can't wait to get into all the Wimby talk. There's no doubt about that. He's going to keep us talking for quite a while. Absolutely, yeah, and and it's only just begun, everybody. That's the crazy thing. It's only just begun. Uh, make sure to follow Locked On Spurs wherever you get your favorite podcast: Google Play, Stitcher, iTunes, on on YouTube. I'm trying to get better as fast as I can. I know I've been erratic with the videos. Like one day's a video, one day there isn't. Two days in a row of audio. You don't want to see me on camera right now. You don't. It's a bad idea. You don't want to see all these tissues jammed in my nose right now. It's, it's not a pretty sight, but. Hopefully, I'll get better. We'll get back to uh, the video side of things right here on Lockdown Spurs. I will be at Barclays Center 
I will be talking uh, with Wimbayama uh, soon. So we'll make sure to, uh, well, I'll make sure to tell you everything you have at Ed Park, please, the day before, the night of, and all the fun there. And uh, like we always say, we thank you for making Lockdown Spurs your first place each and every day. You guys are the everydayers. Tomorrow's show will probably be about the draft. Shocker. Stay tuned for that right here on Lockdown Spurs. But for Jack Thompson, I am Jeff Garcia. We're going to put a lock on this episode of Lockdown Spurs. <laughs>